Growing up as an evangelical Christian kid, you go to Christian summer camp. And one of the things that bothered me the most, especially as a dyslexic kid, was they would have little contests between different teams. And I seemed to always cost the team the win because I could not remember any verses. The only thing I could remember is Jesus wept and I don't even remember where it was. I grew up thinking that I was going to hell and that God hated me and that, that God was really this angry, vengeful God that just wanted me to somehow please God. I lived a life of guilt and a life of self-hate because I thought that's what Christianity was. I thought that's what having faith was all about, was about feeling guilty or being some sort of version of, of a political party. But when I read the Bible, I realized that stuff wasn't true and that a lot of the stuff in here had been misconstrued to say what people wanted it to say. And so for me, the Bible, the New Testament, even the Old Testament set me free. I mean, as a kid, I always had authority figures who used the Bible, which I thought they were using the Bible against me. You know, they would, would say if you, you know, you, you cussed or you, you had lustful thoughts or all these things were going to send you straight to hell. You know, when you're a teenager, all those things are happening in your life daily. You know, I mean, I remember my principals at the Christian school, they were, they seemed so irrational and they said so many things to me that I, uh, I felt terrified by, you know, and I thought, well, they must know what's going on because, you know, they're the guys who know the Bible and they're the authorities who have the authority. And so I had this, you know, false good news, this, this, this counterfeit good news that was caused me to be afraid, caused me to be scared. And you know what? And for a while it did control me till the point where it just burnt me out and I walked away and decided I wanted nothing to do with it. I'll tell you what, I've seen the Bible misused 101 ways. Uh, three ways I can uh, think of is, is, as, as a weapon. Some use it as a fortune cookie. Uh, others use it as a scary fairy tale book. When I see the Bible used as a weapon, I've seen the Bible used as a weapon against my family, friends, and people I love. It really makes me angry because I find when people are using it as a weapon, they're missing the very essence of the Bible. They'll take a point here and a point there, and there'll be a lot of bull in between. It's what I would call a longhorn sermon. You know, it, 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 it's something that, that destroys. And if you read this, Jesus talks about loving your enemies. How would I have known that I need to love my enemies? That's what really blows me away about this book, is it challenges me and the people who Jesus was talking to who were living in an occupied territory to love those who want to kill them. You know, and so when people use this to kill people, they're using it in the wrong way. Others use it as a fortune cookie where they just open up the book and they point to where they want to go. Or they crack open the, the cookie and hope that they're going to find out what tomorrow's lotto numbers are or, you know, what's going to make them happy or what they should be scared of of the day. And uh, often the, the book is used to scare people. Stories of damnation or stories of children whose heads have been crushed onto rocks or, you know, people being swallowed by, by wells when they didn't do what God said to do, you know, and so often we're driven by fear. I grew up in a church where I was driven by fear, and, uh, you know, when we misuse the Bible that way, we do it such a great injustice, not just for others, but I find out we eventually start to believe those very same things. I came back and gave the Bible a chance because someone showed me love and grace and I literally thought they were full of it and that they were compromising their faith. And one day I just, my last hope was, if this is true what you're saying and doing, prove it to me by showing the Bible because I was always back to the Bible growing up. And he said, read the book of Galatians and I found freedom and grace and it changed my life. For me, the main message of Galatians is, is don't get tied back up into the slavery to the law. Um, don't take grace for granted. Don't think that you can do it on your own. Um, remember what Christ has done for us and that we no longer live, but Christ lives in us. And it's about, you know, pick up your cross. You don't have to pick up Jesus' cross because Jesus already picked it up. The message is, is you are accepted. You are loved. And if you're able to receive that, if you're able to accept it, you're accepted, you will experience things like the fruits of the Spirit. And I find that really beautiful. For some reason, I never really connected with the Gospels right away. But then when I realized that Paul's writings were the closest to Jesus and that I was finding out really the essence of Christ through that, I was able to go back to the Gospels and read about Jesus' life and see it in a new light. 
you know, not the old glasses. I had to put on new glasses, not the glasses I was raised with. Let's be honest. We all have lenses. How we grew up, our backgrounds of faith, all sorts of lenses that we see everything through. And we have lenses that we see the Bible through. For me, the two most important lenses, I believe, is Jesus and Paul. Some people would say, well, why would you have a Paul lens when Jesus is the only lens you need? Well, I feel like Paul grabs an essence of Christ that was so close to Christ that allows us to see an essence that the Gospels might not necessarily give us due to the fact they were written so much later. And the Jesus lens is so important because we realize how important it is to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love our enemies, to be good to those who persecute us. Because sometimes in the Bible it seems like, oh, something's harsh is happening here, or slavery happening here. You know, these are the things, the message of Christ are the things that change those things. The message of love your neighbor as yourself. If you're loving someone as yourself, because everyone is your neighbor, you're not going to make them your slave. You're not going to beat them over the head with the Bible. You're going to be patient and kind and show them peace and joy and mercy. Those are the type of things that we learn when we see the, see the Bible through the eyes of Christ. Strange enough, a lot of people have given up on the Apostle Paul because they see him as sexist, angry, uh, judgmental. And it's strange for me because it was the very opposite. I felt like I was in handcuffs and then Paul came along and gave me a key to set me free from man's religion. I found Paul to be hope. When Paul tells me that love keeps no record of when it's been wronged, I found free. When it says, you know, there's a new way to be saved no matter who you are, no matter what you've done. All sin, all fall short of the glories of God, yet God in his gracious kindness declares us not guilty. Paul gets it. I can almost see Paul pacing back and forth in a room and just spouting out to the person sitting there writing it all down. And you can see that he moves and waves and goes, but what Paul always does is come back to the love of Christ, the cross of Christ. So I find when I take the grace of Paul and the love of Jesus and put them together, this book becomes alive. And it takes those things that are hard to read or hard to understand and allows me sometimes just to move right past them because I don't see Jesus there and I don't see the grace that that Paul learned from understanding Christ. There's times I want to walk away from my faith because of this thing, but for some reason that loving my enemies as myself, the idea of grace, the idea of a God who was willing to be humili humiliated through crucifixion draws me back. And to be honest with you, sometimes I wish it didn't, but it continues to. Had I just relied on the memory verses from Bible camp, or the little verse here and there that was used as a weapon, or the fortune cookie style of understanding it, or as a scary book that was just fire insurance. You know, I, I would have never understood it. It wouldn't have been good news, but when I learned to read the book, not just the book, but the books, the library, and started reading the different books in the library, and eventually reading the whole library, it became good news to me. My question to you is what's keeping you from reading this book? Thank you.